Over 80 years ago, Americans all across the country tuned in their radios to hear the William Tell Overture signaling the first episode of The Lone Ranger. This character is a fictional masked Texas Ranger who fought injustice in the old American West with his Native American companion, Tonto. In The Lone Ranger origin story, six members of the Texas Ranger Division are pursuing a gang of outlaws led by the villainous Bartholomew Butch Cavendish, when a guide named Collins betrays them and leads them into an ambush in a remote canyon. The Cavendish gang flee the canyon believing they have killed all of the Texas Rangers, when later, a Native American scout named Tonto stumbles onto the scene and discovers that one ranger is barely alive, so Tonto nurses him back to health. Why, you... you came sabe. Among the rangers killed was the survivor's older brother, Daniel Reed, who was the leader of the ambush group of Texas Rangers. To conceal his identity and honour his fallen brother, the lone ranger fashions a domino mask, while Tonto digs a sixth grave, so that the Cavendish gang will believe that all the rangers have been killed. I am... a lone ranger. Armed with his dual pistols and trademark silver bullets, and riding his trusty steed Silver, the Lone Ranger sets out to capture the Cavendish gang and bring justice to the Wild West. Oh, I'll shoot if I have to, but I'll shoot the wound, not to kill. The Lone Ranger radio serial proved to be a huge hit, and this classic American tale quickly spawned a number of books and comics and an equally popular television series that ran from 1949 to 1957 and starred Clayton Moore as the Lone Ranger and Jay Silverheels as Tonto. Go ahead and shoot, Keller. If I drop this, we'll all be blown to bits. The Lone Ranger is the oldest franchise we've ever covered in a Toy Histories episode, with the earliest toy merchandising being released way back in the 1930s. Over the last eight decades, many different toy companies have manufactured a wide variety of different Lone Ranger toys, including the wonderfully designed 10-inch tall range of action figures released by Gabriel in 1973. Hello toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome to an Analog Toys special feature. So join us as we return to those thrilling days of yesteryear with the Lone Ranger. The Louis Marx Toy Company was founded in 1919 in New York City by brothers Louis and David Marx and this company was arguably the most well-known toy manufacturer in the world during the early half of the 20th century. By 1955, a Time magazine article even called Louis Marx the king of toys, with the company earning almost $50 million in the same year, and this classic American company manufactured many of the earliest Lone Ranger toys. In 1938, Louis Marx released the tin plate Hyo Silver Lone Ranger wind-up toy, as well as a Lone Ranger target game and a sparkling pop pistol. Throughout the 1940s and 50s, many other items of Lone Ranger merchandise were released, with everything from alarm clocks to lunch boxes, and flashlight pistols to plastic play sets, all proving popular with children. However, the first Lone Ranger action figure would not arrive until 1966. Inspired by the success of Hasbro's G.I. Joe in 1964, toy company Ideal released the Captain Action range of action figures two years later. This concept centered on a 12-inch tall action figure named Captain Action, who could adopt the guise of many different hero characters. Hold the brave, strong and true, Greet the lightning from the blue. Captain Action! Captain Action! So super powerful you can change him into nine of the mightiest superheroes of all time. Change Captain Action's uniform and face mask and he's the Lone Ranger! Fighting evil, and his creed, thundering power, lightning speed, Captain Action, he's ideal. The Captain Action Lone Ranger set was included in the first wave of toys, which was released in 1966. This beautiful set sees the Lone Ranger dressed in his original red and black outfit, and includes his face mask, matching pistols and holsters, a Winchester rifle, and a white hat. In 1967, Ideal switched the Lone Ranger outfit from red and black to all blue to match the live action television series, and the company also introduced the Lone Ranger's faithful companion, Tonto. Also included in Ideal's 1967 Captain Action lineup was the Green Hornet. However, this character's connection to the Lone Ranger didn't start with the toy line, it actually goes all the way back to the radio serials of the 1930s. The Green Hornet is in fact a spin off of the Lone Ranger, with the character being the Lone Ranger's great nephew who fights crime in a contemporary world with a similar secret identity. The Green Hornet's alter ego is Britt Reed, and the storyline features many similarities to the Lone Ranger mythology. 
including his mask disguise, a similar sidekick in the character of Kato, and he also has a trusty steed, but instead of a horse, the Green Hornet's ride is a technologically advanced car named the Black Beauty. Although Ideal's range of Captain Action figures and outfits were marvellously designed toys, the popularity of this line soon declined, and Ideal ceased production of Captain Action in 1968. Following the demise of the Captain Action range, and despite having no major TV, movie or comic book media tie-ins at the time of its release, Toy Company Gabriel introduced an expansive line of action figures in 1973, sold under the title The Lone Ranger Rides Again. Return with us now to the exciting days of the old Wild West with these Lone Ranger sets. Will the wagon train be ambushed by renegade Indians? Will Butch Cavendish get away with the Carson City payroll? Will the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrive in time to save Danny, or is it too late? The Lone Ranger by Louis Marx. How it ends is up to you. This line was one of the toy highlights of the 1970s, and its success was due in no small part to Gabriel's unfailing dedication to quality and detail. This range of action figures was well articulated, and each character was designed with high quality clothing, astonishingly well sculpted faces, and each figure came equipped with well detailed plastic accessories. In total, Gabriel released four different 10 inch tall action figures representing the Lone Ranger, Tonto, Butch Cavendish, and Red Sleeves along with two 8.5 inch action figures depicting Dan Reed and Little Bear. All of these figures were sold in solid boxes that featured a side flap and beautiful artwork, and many of the action figures were also later sold on blister cards. The Lone Ranger figure comes dressed in a scaled down version of the all blue outfit that was worn by Clayton Moore in the television series. He is armed with matching pistols and he wears his trademark domino mask, white hat and red scarf. Tonto, the Lone Ranger's faithful companion, comes dressed in his traditional Native American clothing and moccasins, and is also armed with matching pistols. While the ruthless Butch Cavendish, the Lone Ranger's arch enemy, wears a black shirt and pants and a checkered waistcoat. The first three figures are the most common to find in the range, although the Lone Ranger is often missing his domino mask, and it is hard to find Tonto complete with his headband intact. The last three figures produced by Gabriel are far less common and include Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's long lost nephew, Little Bear, the Native American brother of Dan Reed, and finally Red Sleeves, the fierce Apache warrior, who is my favourite figure from the line. In the European market, a Red Sleeves variation was also released, where the figure was designed with a spring-loaded, arrow-firing feature. Speaking of the European market, and as odd as it sounds, although the Gabriel Toy Company produced these figures in the United States, it was in fact the well-known American toy company Louis Marx, who manufactured these toys and sold them throughout Europe. In this foreign marketplace, Marx gifted us with two additional action figure characters. The first of these is the very rare El Lobo, the Mexican outlaw, but the final figure, Tex Dawson, the sheriff of Carson City and trusted friend of the Lone Ranger, is the rarest action figure of them all. As you can see, the Lone Ranger action figures were extremely well made, but any western themed figure line would be incomplete without the inclusion of horses for the characters to ride. Firstly, Gabriel gave us the Lone Ranger's trusty horse, Silver along with Tonto's Pinto Horse Scout, Butch's Wild Black Stallion Smoke, and finally Dan Reed's Palomino Pony Banjo. Gabriel made every effort when designing these amazing animals, and the amount of articulation incorporated into these toy horses is nothing short of impressive. Each horse came with an intricately designed saddle and reins, and also included an action stand so a child could pose the horses, and recreate Silver's rearing action from the opening of the television show. What's also quite amazing is the number of different ways in which these horses were packaged. While the most common way to find the horses is in their first issue plain boxes with the classic artwork, many of them can also be found packaged with their riders, and the Lone Ranger Silver was even available with an 8 weight action saddle that was sold in several different boxes. To further expand the playability of the Lone Ranger toy line, Gabriel also offered up a selection of exciting adventure sets. These sets came in beautiful window boxes and gave children the opportunity to act out a wide variety of different adventures. Most of these sets are relatively common, with the exception being the very rare and highly collectible Lost Cavalry Patrol set. In 1976, Gabriel added two more, even larger, deluxe adventure sets, including the Mysterious Prospector and the Solitary Trapper. In addition to Gabriel's adventure sets, the Louis Marx Toy Company offered many more disguises for the Lone Ranger and Tonto with new outfits which at the time were only available in Europe. 
These new outfits were excellently designed and served to broaden the play possibilities for young children by providing stereotypical western themed characters such as the cowboy, the blacksmith, the bartender and an assortment of different Native American outfits. No vintage action figure line can ever be considered truly complete without the addition of a vehicle and although this line was heavily focused on horses, Gabriel did offer up one vehicle for the Lone Ranger toy line. The 4-in-1 Prairie Wagon is another magnificent toy designed by Gabriel. Sadly, the wagon is very fragile, making it difficult to find complete today. But on the plus side, it did come with a huge assortment of accessories, and the toy's coolest play feature is its ability to be converted in four exciting ways, including a Gold Rush ore wagon, a cattle driving chuck wagon, a hitch -em up ranch wagon, and finally a Westwood Ho covered wagon. Last but certainly not least, we get to the play sets. And just like the rest of the range, this is another area where the Lone Ranger toy line does not disappoint. In North America, Gabriel produced the sprawling Carson City, which was the biggest toy in the range. And this vinyl wrapped cardboard playset could also be converted into an action figure carrying case. However, it was the British branch of the Louis Marx toy company that created the best playsets in the line. Produced by Louis Marx and manufactured in Holland for the European market, four different wooden playsets were offered for the Lone Ranger toy line with the biggest and best playset switching the central locale from Carson City to Dodge City. When collectors discuss the greatest action figure playsets ever created, they frequently cite the likes of Castle Greyskull, G.I. Joe's flag aircraft carrier, or Kenner's Star Wars Death Star. However, I feel that the Lone Ranger's Dodge City playset is often overlooked, and while it might not be the greatest playset ever created, it certainly deserves to be in the conversation. The Dodge City playset is extremely large and equally impressive and features a stable for one of the many horses, a post bank and store, as well as a jail cell for locking up members of the Cavendish gang and a blacksmith shop. And the playset also features wonderful printed details across its wood laminate facade. The inclusion of these epic playsets gave the Lone Ranger toy loan a grandiose scope, which afforded children a miniature version of the Old West in which they could act out every conceivable Lone Ranger adventure. I feel the Lone Ranger toy line is one of the most enjoyable lines to collect from the 1970s and one of the best things about the range is that, apart from a few of the rarer pieces, they can still be picked up fairly easily on today's collector's market. The Gabriel Lone Ranger toy line was very popular while it lasted, but all good things must come to an end. And just like a lot of other 70s toy lines, sales of Lone Ranger toys were severely diminished by the insane popularity of Kenner's 3 3 quarter inch range of Star Wars action figures that were first released in 1978. So when Universal Studios began filming a new movie entitled The Legend of the Lone Ranger, which was to be released in 1981, Gabriel decided to shrink the size of their Lone Ranger action figures down to the Star Wars scale of 3 and 3 quarter inches. Gabriel's Legend of the Lone Ranger toy line featured five action figures and three horses, as well as a now very rare cardboard playset that was only available through a mail-away collector's scheme. Unfortunately for Gabriel though, The Legend of the Lone Ranger movie was an utter disaster and the toy line fizzled quickly. Subsequently, mint in package versions of Gabriel's 3 and 3 quarter inch line of Lone Ranger toys are still readily available on the collector's market. Throughout the 1980s, the popularity of westerns rapidly declined and with it, the Lone Ranger franchise faded into obscurity and there it would stay for another three decades until a new Lone Ranger movie starring Army Hammer and Johnny Depp was released in 2013. This new movie might not have been quite the disappointment that 1981's Legend of the Lone Ranger was, but it too also turned out to be a critical and commercial failure. Due to the fact that Disney was releasing this new Lone Ranger film, the movie obviously had a lot of merchandising to help promote it, including toys. Both NECA and Hot Toys produced action figures based on the movie, but for me the best toys came from Lego, and included a stagecoach, a Colby City set, a silver mine, and the 699 piece Constitution train chase set. Following the failure of Disney's Lone Ranger, the franchise appears to be dead and buried, and I think we're very unlikely to see a brand resurgence anytime in the near future. Looking back over the history of Lone Ranger toys, I can easily say that Gabriel's 10 inch tall range of action figures are the best offerings ever manufactured. Every single product designed for this action figure line was lovingly crafted, handsomely sculpted, and perfectly stitched and they look absolutely magnificent when displayed together. The line provided collectors with a large and diverse range of toys, all produced to excellent standards and superb quality, which gave children a completely immersive play experience.